that same have that same understanding is you know if you're flying the airplane you're flying if you turn the autopilot on don't try to turn the autopilot on and somehow control the airplane once you turn the autopilot on you've relinquished command of the airplane over to the autopilot so that's important to understand too okay right. the center section yeah oh. Go ahead. Before we get to the center, I don't think you talked about the approach button, APR. Well, I was going to, uh, okay, Wait, so I'll, I'll, okay, so this, is, so this is a good time to talk about that, I guess. I mean, it's trying to keep it broken, but it's in, almost impossible to do, so I might as well just talk about that quick. So if you're, in, if you're not instrument rated, oh, this uh, be a, this, yeah, this, this is, be a, is be really a, brief. Okay. All is the only difference, you might say, what's the difference between nav mode and approach mode? The only difference is, all the approach mode does is engages the glide path, makes it, makes it so the glide path will work. So for example, if you want to go up here and do iOS 1.3, you would press the approach button and it would follow the glide path down. If you want to practice a localizer approach, then all you do is just press the nav button and it's not going to, then you would just do your own drive and diving. Because then it's not going to follow, the, it's not going to start pitching down as soon as it sees it. The airplane won't pitch down or GPS approach or an iOS approach unless you press the approach button. It'll just keep driving. It'll just keep altitude. it'll just hold the altitude, yeah. And at what point prior to the prior to the but final approach? Little, little, just as long as you hit it prior to the final approach it was, Yeah. Uh, that's the other thing is that I think if you're underneath it, you know how you, you know how normally when you come in for yeah, an iOS yeah. your glide slope, your goes down. glide slope's above you and as you're flying along then if you if this weight is the glide slope, you're coming up, you know. You're coming along, and then your then your dot comes down. Then it just starts pitching down. That's another thing. Talking about technique is you want to put your flaps on. Uh, usually, what I do is like one dot, because the you know how the airplane tends to come up, and then the servos have a delay to pitching it down. And it, when you put the flaps in, it tends to want to pitch up. So if you wait to put the flaps on until the until you until you intercept the glide slope, what's going to happen is it's going to. Uh, it's going to pitch up and it's going to, the ball is going to come down and then what's going to happen is the thing's going to have to really go down and it's going to chase it down and it's going to go like this a little bit. So if it almost works out perfectly. Uh, and I'll talk more about that in the IR4 section. Uh, anyways, that's the approach button. So uh, VFR pilots probably won't only need to use these two buttons and the heading button. Okay, center section. <coughs> the only buttons will be, yeah, so you have two you can turn the flight director on, so say for instance you take off, but you don't want to turn the autopilot on, you just want to follow a flight director. You want to hand fly, that's called, you know, just flying with raw data. So it's sort of like in between flying without any flight director and putting the autopilot on. So you can hit the flight director, and then if they, if you have it programmed in to turn to a certain heading and climb to a certain altitude, again, the command bar is going to go up, turn to the left, and then you can just take your little yellow airplane and put it up. So what you want to do is you want to like uh, just think of it as spooning, you know. <laughs> when, you, when you have the purple up like this, you just want to spoon right into that the purple command bar. If you do that, you're going to fly exactly because that's what the autopilot is going to do. So uh, yeah, and then then when, then when you want to, so the point is you can turn the flight director on without the autopilot, but not vice versa. Because the autopilot obviously needs the flight director. So when you hit the autopilot buttons, it automatically turns on the flight director. All right. The all damper, we don't have that. The level button is just the emergency button. So basically, say, for instance, your VFR button is excellent. Somehow you get yourself into the clouds or something. And uh, so you get disoriented. So this is the <coughs> or life behind the plane. What? Or if you get behind the plane. Yeah. If something happens. You, for any reason, yeah. You just press that. So here you are turning or you're climbing and you just you just wanna you just wanna go straight, you just wanna take your current heading and you wanna hold your current altitude, you press that button and it works. I mean I put the thing in because I was trying this out, put an unusual altitude, you press that button and it just it just holds the altitude, it just levels the airplane. Alright, here's the most complicated uh, part of it. This here is the this, this here is everything that controls the pitch. Uh, so I'll start with the altitude select button. It works very knob, I mean. The way that works is if you press it in, what it does is it sinks your current altitude, just like on the heading sink. Uh, if you press 
and then you can set your altitude so that they, so before you take off they might say you know, climb and maintain 3,000 feet. So you would set this to 3,000 feet. What you would see up here is 3,000 feet would be bugged. A little symbol there means what you bug, just like when you have a heading bug. You would set that to 3,000 feet. And uh, and then what you have to do is, well, all these other buttons, okay, this button here, altitude button, that just sinks your current altitude. So if you're flying along, you press that button, you just want to hold your altitude, and you just press that button and it holds that altitude. Does it bug it too? No, it, no. It that's a, that's an important point. Yeah, what it'll do is see this right up here. So you see, for instance, you're climbing through 2,000 feet, and they say stop climb. What you can do is you can press the out, but you you know you're eventually going to climb to 3,000 feet. So if for some reason they want you to stop to climb at 2,000. You're coming up to 1,900. You would press the button, and it would stop it. You know, I mean, it, it might fall. Uh, you might still shoot up because you know, it has to level the airplane off. So it might. If you press it at 1900, I'm not sure about this. It might level you off at 2000. Uh, but then it holds that, it bugs it. But then you're still bugged at an altitude, so then you can go ahead and, uh, so if you're 2000 feet, you want to go up to 3000 feet, it's a perfect segue to tell you well, how do you control this airplane? You have to tell the airplane. In heading, there's no way you don't tell the airplane like how far to bank, it just, it just turns. In altitude, uh, you're going in altitude, if you want to change altitude, you have to tell the airplane how to get up to altitude. So what you do is forget about this VNAV button. I don't, uh, I'm not sure that we have this feature, and I've never used it. it it's not even. It's, it's a future. Yeah, it's that's what I thought. Future. Yeah, that's what I thought. So, <laughs> two two ways to change your altitude with the autopilot. You can go in vertical speed. You can go in indicated airspeed. That's what those two mean. So. Here's what I recommend. Always climb an indicated airspeed. I know this is this has, you know, uh, stall protection and all that, but you know, it could break. So you never want to get to in a situation, you wouldn't want to climb at vertical speed because what happens if you're you're it's a hot day and you're fully loaded and uh, you set you tell it to climb at you know 700 feet a minute or something. Well this this autopilot it all is it's Remember, all it's still in its stupid, all it's trying to do is it sees that it's supposed to make that number be 700 feet per minute. So it's just going to keep pitch, it's just going to keep pitching up and try to get that 700 feet a minute. It might, you might get too slow of an airspeed. You might get, you know, close to a stall. Although it has stall protection, it's not supposed to let you do that. But why, why risk it? So, the common, common procedure like all the flying I've done, is to climb an indicated airspeed. And I would recommend for this airplane, you know, like 80, 85 knots. It gives you a good, you know, view over the, you know, it's just, it, it gives you a good view. If you're pitched up too much, you can't see what's out in front of you. So if you just set, so when you take off, as soon as you engage the autopilot, uh, what you can do is you can go an indicated airspeed, set this, and you just move this wheel here. This wheel does two things depending on which button you push here. So if you take off, you would go indicated airspeed, you would set this button, you would bug this, it bugs it over here, if it's a bug. Uh, I think right here, or up, I even forget where it does it. But anyway, a window opens up, like right here, and tells you what you're bugging. As you, as you spin it, every, every click changes it one knot. So it takes whatever your current speed is, usually you don't have to change it at all, because if you set it for 85, and then you're at, a, say, 800 feet out here, MSL, you press the autopilot button, you press the indicated airspeed, you're already pretty, if you're already 85, it just holds it. You don't need to do anything. It's just going to hold that until it gets up to the altitude, to whatever altitude you have, and then it's going to pitch over and level off. So what you're going to see in the white here, so what you would see, again, you want to make sure that this thing's doing what, you're, what you want it to do. So if they say turn left heading 270, you would sink the heading bug, uh, turn the heading bug to 270, press the heading button, and then you would go indicated airspeed, move it if it needs to be adjusted at all, and it's going to set that, it's going to hold that airspeed, and it's going to turn to that heading, and it's going to keep climbing to you whatever altitude you have booked. And what you're going to see in the white is you're going to see in IAS, or, in the, or you're going to see in the green IAS, 
and then you're going to see 2500 over alt s that means altitude select and then as soon as it gets to that attitude the white is going to turn to green it's going to turn black over here and you're going to hold the altitude and then it's not going to do anything with the head you've already turned on that head uh yeah okay getting back to this wheel because this wheel does a lot like i said it, this wheel changes your indicated airspeed, and if you're in, when you descend, so what, what I do is I always descend in vertical airspeed, so depending on, like yesterday I was flying, like I was telling you about that trip yesterday, yes, usually I'll, it's taking passengers and stuff, so usually they don't want to, usually it hurts their ears if you go more than like five or six hundred feet a minute, there's no need to usually, but yesterday, you know, the controller said, you know, come down, you know, basically said, you know, speed it up, come down faster. So you, know, you just spin this wheel. So what you can do is, so this, uh, okay, so one thing I didn't talk about was when you first take off, I talked about the buttons, so let's, let me uh, talk about that a little bit. When you first turn on the autopilot, when you, you're here you are climbing out, you press the, let's talk about what are the default modes of the airplane. Let's go back to this slide. Again, <coughs> this is gonna say the autopilot turns on green, this says a rule, all you're going to see over here is ROL, and all you're going to see over here is PIT. So what that means is if, you're, if the airplane is, airplane is banked, I think, I forget all the numbers, but I think it was like less than 10 degrees or 15. Less than six. Less than six, okay. So if you're less than six degrees, it just holds it level. Between six and like 20, it holds whatever bank that is. And then if you're more than that, if you're more than 20 degrees, it, if you're 30 degrees, it just moves it back to 20 degrees in whatever angle that is. So, uh, that's because it has to have a default when you first turn it on. It has no idea how you want to climb. It has a new, no idea where it wants to go. So it's just going to hold your bank. If you're climbing straight out, it's going to hold your bank, hold your pitch. It's going to hold it at zero if you're basically less than six like we talked about. So that's the default. So now if you're in default mode, say for instance you're pitched, but you don't want, you're busy right now. You don't want to be you know, you're close to the ground, but all you want to do is you're, you, you pitched up a little bit too, you hit the autopilot, you're pitched up a little bit more than you want, you see that it's going a little bit faster than you want, so instead of setting all the autopilot up, you can just move this wheel one click, one click down, you know, if you're up at, say you're up at 10 degrees and you want to pitch down to maybe 7 degrees, you can just spin this wheel this way, and it works just like your trim, trim wheel on the Cessna, you know. So if you want to put the nose down, you just, you just spin it up. This is like a miniature version of that. If you want to put the nose up, that's if you're in pitch mode. <coughs> you know what happens if you're in indicated air, if you're in, uh, okay, so like before, as I talked about, if you're on an altitude, like say for instance, they say stop at 2,000 feet, you bugged 3,000 feet. Here's a situation. You bugged 3,000 feet for your altitude capture. They say stop your climb at 2,000 feet for traffic. All right. So what you could do is, say for instance, you press the, so you, you're climbing, you're at 1,900 feet, and you hit the, hit the out button, but the airplane, by the time it got, a, got around to getting you stopped, you're at 2,100 or something. You can move this, you don't have to go into indicated airspeed mode or vertical speed mode to change your altitude, and then set your altitude, there's a whole bunch of work to, because you know you're going to be climbing up to 3,000 feet. So what if you just want to hold 2,000 feet for a minute or two? So then you would just hit the altitude button that holds your altitude, like I said. Now you're 100 feet high. So now you can just click this wheel, every click of the wheel. Again, it works just the same as the trim button. Every time you click it, 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 it captured 2,100 feet. You just click it a couple of clicks down, well, 10 clicks down, and that would get you down to 100 feet low. So it captures the select altitude. So that's what this wheel here does. That's another thing that it does. So again, it, Changes the angle half a degree if you're in pitch mode. If you're in altitude capture mode, changes it 10 degrees. If you're climbing, like I said, when you're climbing, uh, say for instance, you're climbing, you hit the autopilot on, you're climbing at you know, 75 knots, and you hit the autopilot button, and, it's in, and uh, you hit, uh, yeah, so you hit, the and you hit indicated airspeed. But you didn't want to climb at 75 knots, you wanted to climb at 85. So then you would just click this button. Again, it works the same. Uh, again, I forget how this works because obviously when you're in indicated airspeed, basically I just move it. 
I just move the wheel because obviously if you move the wheel down, if the nose goes down, that puts your number up. So I forget if it's, I keep forgetting this. It, it changes, it's up and down. It has nothing to do with the nose. It's okay, so that means if you put the, okay, so that means if you put the nose down, the number is going to get higher. So you would put the nose down to get a faster airspeed. Okay, so, uh, but if you forget how that works, then as soon as you hit indicated airspeed and you move the wheel, the number comes up there and you can just see, okay, oh, I'm turning it the wrong way. And the number will go up to 85. If, that's what you want. if you're yeah. cruising straight level and you're holding an altitude, you've got that altitude bug. Yeah. Will that thumb wheel work? Yes. Well, well, basically, what it'll do is it'll oh, you're holding. If it's bugged, if you got you know you got. Okay, so if you're bugged in altitude, uh, it's it's yeah. I mean, can you adjust that? For example, so I think feet. I think you can click. Yeah. yeah. In other words, so it's yeah. altitude ten feet. I yeah. do yeah. see. Yeah. yeah. So basically, I can't, I can't yeah. quite understand. Yeah. So if I'm you're, yeah. Yeah. If you're at altitude hold, if you're holding an altitude, just because you're bugged in an altitude, obviously you can change the altitude. And all is the bug, all is the okay. bugged altitude. What the bugged altitude does is that's the altitude it's going to capture if you're in a vertical speed mode, uh -huh. some type of vertical speed mode, namely an indicated airspeed or a vertical speed. So when you're coming up, so because it has to know where to stop, because if, if it's if it's flying along at 85 <coughs> knots and you're full throttle, the only way you can fly full throttle at 85 knots is to climb, right? Remember, pitch and power equals performance. So it has to know where to stop. So whatever altitude you have, it stops. Once you're, once you're <coughs> captured that altitude, now you can change it a little bit by using that, and then it'll just, it just won't be at the bugged altitude. Because remember, remember we went back to this other slide that showed you. Uh, no. Uh, yes. You, yes. You can be at a different. This number. This number doesn't have to match this number. This is the bugged altitude. This is the altitude that's captured. Right. That can be two different numbers. For sure. Right. So if you're at 2,500 feet, that's what you got locked in there. You can set the indicated airspeed to 10,000. Ain't gonna do nothing because you're at the altitude. When you turn that altitude bug, that's when one of those other modes will actually kick in. No. But say for instance, you say for instance, you just wanted to go. You were flying along VFR. You were at your VFR altitude, and you were you were you were at 4,500 feet. Now you just wanted to go up a couple hundred. You saw another aircraft and looked like it was getting a little bit slow, close. You can just move this up, and it's going to move up to 4,700 if you want to, and then go, and then, and then move the wheel back down to 4,500 if you want to, or put it in a vertical speed mode to get yourself back down to the bug altitude. Right. So okay. I hope, hopefully that doesn't. That was a little bit. If anyone has any questions with that, I can see this because this is where the confusion can lie, and I see this a lot. Is and I was very. When I was first learning this, it, uh, I think I first got introduced to all this stuff when I was at Air Wisconsin, and it took me a while to like, totally understand this because the thing to remember again is that uh, unlike, see, the heading bug is not like, the, it's different in a respect than the heading, and people tend to think of the heading bug, the altitude button, as the, in a very analogous way to the heading bug. Because when you turn, if you're in heading mode, and you turn your heading bug to a different heading, it just goes and turns to that heading. So people think, okay, I'm at 3,000 feet. They tell me to turn to go to 5,000 feet. So I'm going to turn the altitude selector up to 5,000 feet, and it's going to go up to 5,000 feet. But it's just going to stay there because you you have to tell the airplane how to get to that altitude. In a heading mode, the airplane just you don't have to tell it. It just has a standard bank rate or whatever. I don't know if it's exactly a standard rate, but it just turns whatever bank it wants to and gets you on that new heading. But whenever you want to change an altitude, you have to change the heading. You have to turn the selector, the knob, to the altitude you want to do. And then if the controller calls you and says, why aren't you going to the new altitude? It's because you forgot to tell the airplane how to get to that altitude. Brian, there's another ahead. way to, uh, to bug that. You could go right to the G5. Yeah, yeah, and, right. You know, yeah, absolutely. Press the button on the right yep. and select Good point. It. Thanks for throwing that in. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so the, so again, <laughs> I generally like to use the controller, but again, this, we don't have the control, and I'm, I'm used to having the controller at a logical place. 
<laughs> yeah. Yeah. The good thing, yeah. the good, uh, yeah. the good thing about it is we do have. There is a way so that you can change. Obviously, you can change the heading bug and the altitude selector on on our G fives. Okay. And again, so getting to the getting back to what this knob here does, one knot changes that, and then when you're in vertical speed, again, indicated airspeed for climbing. Uh, uh, vertical speed for descending, and so when you when you're ready for your descent, you're at 5,000 feet. You want to get down to 3,000 feet. You turn your altitude selector down to 3,000 feet. You hit the vertical speed, then you turn it to whatever you want to go down. I just spin the wheel down, and every click is 100 feet up or down. And obviously, it's not going to if you put it. Yeah, I don't even need to say that really. But I'm going to say if you get down, if you tell it to go down to 3,000 feet and you tell it to go up at 500 feet, it's not going to do anything. Because you've given it conflicting, you know, information. And that's the other thing about this uh, airplane. And that's another thing about this airplane is that uh, make sure you don't, uh, make sure you understand the default. Like if you confuse the autopilot in some way, say for example you, uh, what happens if you press the V-lock button? Here's an example. You press your own GPS. You didn't tune a VOR frequency. Uh, you know, so it's not tuned any, but you hit the V-lock button. Well, now it doesn't have any navigation. It doesn't know what to do. Where's it supposed to go? You, it's, it's not following the GPS anymore. You've told it to go somewhere, but you haven't told it where to go. So if it gets confused, again, it's just going to go back. It's just going to say roll here. Because you haven't told it, it doesn't know where it's supposed to point its nose. So it's just going to level the wings. So if you don't give it an input, it's just going to say, well, I'm just going to keep my wings level until you tell me what to do. 